So, guys, what happens when a fish goes to the drop-off? His father might be sent on the lookout for him. Finding Nemo, the fifth film released by Pixar Animation Studios. This one was released in 2003. The fifth CGI animated feature, that is. So, what's it about? Spoilers, because this is what it's about. When a young clownfish is taken off his coral reef home by a diver, his father then has to traverse the whole ocean looking for him. And on this search, he meets another fish with um, short-term memory loss. Now, Nemo, the boy clownfish who gets taken from the reef, his father is Marlin, and all the other sea creatures seem to think he's a literal clown because of the type of fish he is. <laughs> and yeah, and Dory is the name of the fish with short term memory loss that runs in her family. And while they're on this search for Nemo, they get taken under the fin by a group of sharks who pledge not to eat other fish. Bruce, the great white leader, and the great white, who is the leader of their group, Chum, I don't know what type of fish he is, but okay. And Anchor is a hammerhead. I. So yeah. And so then Marlin tells him that he has to go on the search for his son and, well, accidentally hurts Dory and upon smelling the blood... Sends Bruce into a frenzy. And helping them along the way is Nigel the Pelican. Of course they also have to do battle with Jellyfish. And another character who helps them on their journey is Crush, the sea turtle. He's 150, dude, and still young. <laughs> of course, no. Other characters we meet during the story are Darla, the dentist niece, who Nemo is supposed to be given to as a birthday gift, the dentist himself, P. Sherman 42, Wallaby Way, Sydney, and the other fish in the tank gang, who help Nemo to get back out into the sea. To reunite with his father, Marlin. 
Now, I'm just going to share with you guys this little uh, bit of information. Uh, the theory goes that this film is a metaphor for the stages of grief because at the very beginning of the film we see a barracuda attacking the reef home and killing Marlon's wife, Coral, and the other unborn clownfish embryos, leaving only one behind. Now, the theory goes, as I said, that the film's a metaphor for the stages of grief and it's all going on in Marlin's head. So yeah, a dark theory suggesting Nemo is dead. And the only evidence for this theory is that Nemo means no one in Latin. Hmm, <laughs> finding no one? <laughs> okay. Now, a quick crash course for you now. In what the stages of grief are. So... And then we'll apply them to the film, to Marlin. So, um... So, okay, the first stage is denial. Feeling numb is common in the early days after a bereavement. Some people at first carry on as if nothing has happened, even if, it, even if we know with our heads that someone has died. It can be hard to believe that someone important is not coming back. The Barracuda attack at the beginning of the film. Which kills Coral and the other eggs. And supposedly Nemo as well. This is Marlin in the stage of denial, according to the theory. <laughs> Anger. Anger is a completely natural emotion and very natural after someone dies. Death can seem cruel and unfair, especially when you feel someone has died before their time or you had plans for the future together. It's also common to feel angry towards the person who has died or angry at ourselves for things we did or did not do before their death. The stage of anger for Marlin. Is happening through the film. Where he can't forgive himself. For his wife's death. And. He's become afraid of the ocean since the Barracuda attack as well. And also he shows a bit of this towards Dory 
then who can blame him at that point? <laughs> Bargaining. When we're in pain, it's sometimes hard to accept that there's nothing we can do to change things. Bargaining is when we start to make deals with ourselves, or perhaps with God, if you're religious. We want to believe that if we act in a particular in particular ways, we will feel better. It's also common to find ourselves going over and over things that happened in the past and asking a lot of what-if questions, wishing we could go back and change things in the hope things could have turned out differently. So basically bargaining is beating yourself up over not doing things the way you think you should have done before a loved one dies. And yes, clearly, according to theory, this is what Marlin is also going through because he can't believe or because he thinks uh, he should have done things better when Coral was around. Depression. A very common thing to go through when you lose a loved one. And of course, it's a sadness and longing are what we think of most often when we think about grief. The pain can be very intense and come in waves over many months or years. Life can feel like it no longer holds any meaning which can be very scary. And obviously, Marlin actually feels this depression when he loses Nemo in the film. So at least the bargaining also could happen after Marlin loses Nemo and has to go traversing the ocean to find him. And... Acceptance. Grief comes in waves and it can feel like nothing will ever be right again. But gradually, most people find that the pain eases and it is possible to accept what has happened. We may never get over the death of someone precious but we can learn to live again while keeping the mean uh, the memories of those who have who we have lost close to us okay now apparently no according to theory for finding nemo the acceptance comes in when marlin and nemo father and son are reunited after the whole ordeal So, okay, so we've just gone through the five stages of grief and applied them to the find, to the uh, to Marlin in finding Nemo, as per the theory. And I can tell you that Look at it in whatever way you want, but don't overthink it. Don't ruin it for kids, because it is, at the end of the day, a kid's film. And we don't want to traumatise them with information like that. It is just a theory, and... <laughs> and I'm going to debunk it. Yeah, there you go. The film is not, repeat, not a metaphor. For the five stages of grief. No, it's not. It's just a story of a, a young boy clownfish who gets taken from his reef home and his father having to traverse the ocean to get him back. <laughs> and...
this is supposed to be a review and I've just debunked a theory around this film. Hmm. I hope you enjoyed that. Because if you did, I'd like you to please leave a like, comment, a nice one please, share the video with your friends and leave a, uh, and subscribe to the channel. Finding Nemo is a good film and I will see you in the next video. Until then, have a some magical time.